Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Well, one storm is in the books, almost. We've still got some scattered snow showers in the mountains, but the questions now arise, is there another one in the on the horizon or in the next week or so? Well, maybe the pattern certainly is favorable and we're gonna talk about that today as we get into the vlog because it's an active pattern. So here's our storm and a lot of folks woke up to some lingering snow showers and what happened uh, overnight was, you know, we expected this strong northwest flow. So the snow in the mountains is going to continue on and off today into tonight. But in typical fashion, sometimes very strong northwest flow produces some snow showers that what we call break containment means they made it over the mountains. And we did see some scattered snow showers across the area today. But for the most part, it's just a cold, cold air mass that's moving in as this low pressure system moves to the northeast and away from us. Now, what's happened in the pattern is we're developing a pretty significant dip in the jet stream or trough over the eastern US. And that trough is gonna to lead to a very active pattern and possibly another chance of winter weather in the next seven days. So this is a view of the upper air pattern over North America. And you see right away, we've got this dip in the jet stream over the east. There's our storm that affected us here in the last 24 hours. But as we go through the week, another dip tries to develop. Another little spoke of energy comes down, and this is heading into the upcoming weekend. So we go through time, and I'll stop this Friday afternoon. Pretty sharp trough right here. You see that? That is a pretty big trough here. It's sharp, it's very narrow, but we've got tons of cold air to play with. The ridge is out west, which is a complete flip in the pattern from what we had in December. Remember when it was super warm, the blowtorch was going on, but that little dip is going to move over us Friday into Saturday and the trough kind of hangs out over the eastern U.S. and actually deepens as a larger trough. So this is actually a little piece of the polar vortex, what we call a lobe. Now, you know, you hear the polar vortex at the time. It never really comes into the U.S., but when it sinks south into Canada or little spokes of energy come down in here, it helps drive cold air down into the southeast. So that's what that does. And you can see how, how persistent that is over eastern Canada with maybe another dip in the jet stream developing. So that big ridge or big trough and these little short waves we call them or these little troughs that come around it help enhance our snow chances. So what is the potential? Well, let's look at that. If we look at the Friday time frame, and I'll slide this over so you can see it, this is the probability of seeing wintry precipitation. So quarter inch liquid equivalent of snow, sleet, or ice. And it's always important to preface that because like we saw with the last storm, we saw a little bit of everything. Um, you could see there's a there's a 10%, 10 to 30% chance there. Saturday into Sunday, almost the whole Carolinas are under the 10 to 30% chance with a little higher chance near the coast. And then into Sunday, we still have a 10 to 30% chance. So how is it that we have three consecutive days with at least a chance of wintry precipitation? Well, let me explain. All right, so before we get into the details, it's always important to remember my winter weather forecasting rules. So seven to 10 days out, all you're looking for is pattern recognition. Are we in a favorable pattern for the Southeast? So we can say check there. Five to seven days out, which is essentially what this upcoming weekend is, is this pattern trending up or down? Is it more or less likely? Well, right now I'd say it's trending up a little bit, but I also could say it's probably even. It's certainly not trending down. So we're kind of in between there. We're not to this point yet uh, where we get timing and storm type, snow, sleet, or ice. And we're certainly nowhere near one to three days out, which is when you see people forecast this in this time frame, please just ignore those. That's not the way this works. And you're going to see those crazy totals like we saw last week ahead of this storm. How many people thought we were getting 9 to 12 inches or 8 to 14 or your app told you that? We ended up with two inches, okay? That's why we wait until later on for this thing to develop. All right, so there's the rules. Let's get right to the setup here. So here's our storm today. We'll go through time. Really cold air tonight. By the way, down into the middle teens overnight, big area of high pressure. Now what's happening here is we've got a cold front right here. It doesn't look like much, but this is developing low pressure system. And here's our cold front. This is heading towards the Carolinas. Now, this is not the storm. This is actually probably going to be rain for a lot of us. You see it moving into the southeast. And again, rain for areas outside of the mountains, but snow for areas in the mountains and maybe back to the west a little bit. But this front's very crucial because what it's doing, it's bringing in this big area of high pressure. This is an Arctic high back here. This thing is huge and it is pumping in really cold air. So this is your great table setter. Every winter storm we're going to have here in the southeast, it's not the first system that brings the cold air. It's always the second system. So anytime you see someone post, it's going from warm to cold, and that first system, they're going, oh, we're going to get snow from it. 
that rarely happens. Maybe one out of 10 times will we get some weird setup where that happens. But the table setter, the cold front first, helps put the cold air in place for the follow-on system, which gives you a much better chance of wintry weather. So that's this system on Thursday. It pushes through, and what's interesting is it stalls just off the coast. So if you look, this is a big sprawling cold front parked right on the coast, and then we've got an Arctic high pressure system to the northeast. So that normally is not a big deal, but what happens if this front starts backing up to the northwest like this, or in this case, we get areas of low pressure to form along the front, and then they track along the stalled front. Each low pressure system buckles the front, pulls moisture back to the northwest, and can throw moisture back into that cold air. And that's what you're seeing in the guidance. You see a little low pressure system form on Friday near the coast and try to spread snow and a little bit of sleep back east, but that's not much of anything. Here comes another wave of low pressure on the same front. Remember, the whole time, there's a front here. There's a front buckled, stalled here, and a low pressure is going to form here, and one's going to form here, and they're going to move along the front. Think of these like train cars on the train tracks. The train tracks are laid, and each little car has a load of precipitation with it. And in this case, the first one doesn't look like much to me, but the second one, which arrives this weekend, if you look at the time, that's the 22nd, that's Saturday um, into Sunday, that one actually has some potential. And because the low is so close to the coast, this is a much more favorable track for pure snow or sleet, not as much freezing rain. Now, further south, sure, there's some freezing rain risk closer to the front, but for the western Carolinas and the Piedmont, this is more of a snow or sleet setup. And you see that wave of low pressure move on and then it exits. So you saw that there was two separate waves that came through. That's why you're seeing multiple days of maybe a chance because this first one, right there eh, maybe a chance but maybe east of charlotte honestly eastern north carolina and the second one looks a little bit more favorable so what are the legit chances of this well let's take a look at the ensembles we run the european ensembles we've got 51 of them that we can look at if you look at saturday we've got probably about 80 percent of them showing some amount of snow with a two two inch mean so that's pretty good. And you see some other systems next week, but the, the probabilities right now are pretty low. Let's focus on this one first. But you see two inch, two inch ensemble mean for Charlotte. GFS, I'd say about half of the 31 have it, and that's about an inch. So looking at those, that's, that's something to keep an eye on. Those ensembles are much better than a single model run or a single app forecast, which, you know, if you ever wonder why the apps are so crazy, what the apps do, they're completely automated computers. There's no human usually ever involved unless it's a local app. What they do, depending on the app, that one app might grab this one ensemble member and give you a 10 inch total. Another app might give you this one. Um, another app might give you the zero. Um, but what's smarter is to take all of these and then take all of these and mean them or average them out. And that's gonna give you down here at the bottom a much more reasonable or more likely scenario instead of a crazy outlier so this was a long vlog longer than i expected but hey we're in an active pattern we've got time to watch this and of course i'll keep you updated throughout the week